Did you know that the sea isn't actually level? You might be scratching your head thinking, but it looks so flat and even. Well, let's dive into what's really going on with our oceans. When we talk about sea level, we're generally picturing that consistent flat surface that stretches across the horizon. However, the reality is quite different and far more dynamic. The term sea level itself is a bit of a misnomer because it suggests uniformity that doesn't exist in nature. One of the most fascinating aspects of our oceans is the impact of the Earth's rotation. It's strongest at the equator, which causes the water there to bulge outward. Yes, you heard right, a bulge. This phenomenon is due to the centrifugal force which flings the water away from the Earth's axis as it spins. Consequently, the sea level at the equator is higher and literally further from the center of the Earth than at the poles. But wait, there's more. Variations in sea level aren't just a party trick of the Earth's rotation. They're also influenced by the differences in Earth's gravitational strength at various locations. Gravity isn't uniform either. It changes depending on the mass of underground features like mountains or deep sea trenches. This means in some places, gravity pulls water slightly stronger, causing variations in sea level. So next time you're at the beach, remember, you're standing next to a giant global water bulge. Every breath you take, you inhale 50 potentially harmful bacteria. Now before you rush off to live in a bubble, let's dive into the microscopic world that's hitching a ride on every inhale. Picture this. Among the myriad of bacteria swirling around in the air, common culprits include Streptococcus, which can give you a sore throat, or the Staphylococcus bacteria, known for skin infections. There's also the ever-present Pseudomonas, which, believe it or not, can sometimes be found tap dancing on your kitchen counter. But here's the kicker. Your body is an incredible fortress. The human immune system is like the unsung hero of an action-packed blockbuster with each breath. While these microscopic invaders try to make a home in your lungs, your immune cells are at the ready, like tiny ninjas, battling these bacteria and ensuring that the vast majority are destroyed before they can say, boo. Imagine your immune cells equipped with microscopic nunchucks and laser guns, zapping and kicking those pesky bacteria out of your system. It's a microscopic melee in there, and thankfully, your immune system wins almost every time. So, while it might seem like every breath is a gamble, your body is tirelessly working to keep you healthy, proving that we are walking, talking fortresses of biological warfare. Who knew breathing could be such an extreme sport? Can smells travel through water? Absolutely, but don't try sniffing underwater. Now let's dive into the science behind this fascinating phenomenon. Smell, in its essence, is all about molecules. These microscopic particles are usually airborne, which is how they waltz right into our noses on land. But here's the twist. These same molecules can also travel through liquids. Imagine a molecule as a tiny, intrepid explorer. In water, these explorers don't just stop their journey, they continue moving, albeit a bit differently. Due to water's denser nature compared to air, these molecules move slower, but they do move. This is why when you step into a heavily chlorinated pool, the sharp scent of chlorine hits you almost immediately. It's not magic, it's just chemistry. Let's break it down further. When something like chlorine is dissolved in water, it releases molecules that are volatile enough to escape from the liquid into the air. Once they're airborne, they make their way to our noses, which is why you can smell the pool even before you dive in. This process is happening all around us. From the fresh smell of rain on soil to the aroma of a hot cup of coffee, what you're actually smelling are these adventurous molecules making their leap from liquid to air. So yes, smells can swim. And while they do it a bit more leisurely in liquids than in air, they definitely make their presence known. Keep this in mind next time you're enjoying that sea breeze or sniffing around a rose garden after the rain. Bats aren't blind, despite what the old saying suggests. Let's swoop right into one of the most misunderstood creatures of the night, the bat. Contrary to the popular myth, bats are not blind. In fact, they can see just as well as humans and some species can even see in color, but that's not their only superpower. Bats are famous for their ability to navigate and hunt in complete darkness, thanks to a remarkable skill called echolocation. Echolocation works a bit like biological sonar. Bats emit high-frequency sounds that bounce off objects and return as echoes. 
By listening to these echoes, bats can determine the size, shape, and distance of obstacles or prey, all in pitch black. Think of it as having a natural GPS that also works as night vision goggles. This incredible ability allows bats to weave through dense forests, swoop down on tiny insects, and avoid obstacles at breakneck speeds. It's a common misconception that bats rely solely on echolocation, while it's crucial for their nocturnal adventures during lower light conditions such as dusk or dawn, their eyes are perfect for getting around. So, why the myth about blindness? It likely stems from bats' nocturnal nature and their uncanny ability to move in darkness which led to assumptions about their eyesight. But as we've seen, bats use both their keen vision and echolocation to interact with their environment effectively. Turns out bats can see the light after all. Think you can fold a piece of paper more than eight times? Think again? Now, let's dive into the deceptively simple world of folding paper. Every time you fold a piece of paper, the thickness doubles. This exponential growth means that very quickly, you're not just folding a thin sheet, but battling a miniature cardboard-like slab. Let's break it down. Fold one and it's just two layers thick. By the fourth fold, it's 16 layers. At eight folds, believe it or not, you're wrestling with 256 layers of paper. It's like trying to bend a phone book, if anyone remembers what those were. But here's where it gets really interesting. Enter Brittany Gallivan, a high school student from California with a penchant for challenge and perhaps a lot of time on her hands. In 2002, Brittany didn't just fold a piece of paper eight times. She folded a 1.2 kilometer long piece of tissue paper 12 times. That's right, 12. She showed that with enough paper and the right technique, you can push beyond what seems physically implausible. Brittany's method involved calculating the width, length, and thickness of the paper to find just the right balance. It wasn't just about muscle. It was about mathematics and meticulous planning. So next time you're fiddling with a receipt or a napkin, remember the paper folding queen and think, maybe it's not just about the paper, but the patience. Let's recap some of the mind-bending facts we've uncovered today. First off, who knew that sea level isn't actually level? That's right, the Earth has its own way of doing things, spinning around and making the middle, right around the equator, bulge outward. It's like Earth is wearing a belt that's a bit too tight, so it puffs out a bit in the middle. This means that the average sea level at the equator is actually further from the center of the Earth than at the poles. Talk about having a unique figure. Then there's the whole breathing scenario. Every time you take a breath, you're not just inhaling oxygen, but also about 50 types of bacteria. But hey, no need to hold your breath. Your immune system is on it, zapping those invaders faster than you can say, achoo. It's like having your own personal bodyguard, but microscopic. Moving on to our watery world, did you ever imagine that smells can travel through liquid? That's right, next time you're thinking of sniffing underwater, maybe don't. But it's fascinating to think that odors can indeed make their way through the H2O. It's not magic, it's just another day for molecules doing their thing. And bats, they can see folks. Despite the old saying that they're blind, these nocturnal creatures actually have eyes and they do work. However, they prefer using their super cool echolocation because, let's face it, it's probably more fun to see with sound. Now about folding a piece of paper, you might think eight folds is nothing, but try it with an A4 sheet. It quickly becomes an impossible task, not just a challenge. And let's tip our hats to Brittany Gallivan, who managed to fold a super long piece of paper 12 times. That's some serious paper aerobics. So which of these facts caught you off guard the most? Was it the bulging sea, the bacterial breath, the liquid scents, the seeing bats, or the stubborn paper? Remember, the world is full of surprises, just waiting for you to fold them open. Just maybe not with a piece of paper after the eighth fold.